This video is brought to you by BoardGamePrices.com. Find the best prices for board games at BoardGamePrices.com. Kia ora koutou, and welcome to the games I got rid of in the first half of 2019. One of the side effects of reviewing so many games as I've been doing over the last year and a bit is I keep getting more and more games turning up. Unfortunately, the place where I have all my games and my shelves don't get any bigger. So more games come in, some games have to go out. And these videos are to explain the rationale about why some of those games left my collection. Some it's because I really, really hated them. Some it's because there were just better games that do the same thing. And others because they were okay games, but okay games just don't cut it anymore. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my takes on why I got rid of these dozen games. It was raining outside. The rain rained heavily and rained down rainily on the rain-soaked street. I got out of my car and stepped into the rain, crossed the street and got into the elevator, and took it up to the top floor. The sergeant was there to greet me. He offered me a chair and gave me a donut and coffee. It was raining. I said to him, we really need to solve this case, and he agreed and offered me a donut and some coffee. I then got in the elevator and took it upstairs in the rain. The donut offered me a seat, and the coffee said to me, we need to solve this case in the rain. The sergeant put my chair in the elevator and we took it in the rain to the coffee. The coffee stepped out of the elevator and turned to the sergeant and said, the donut needs to solve this case. We then entered a 16 digit number into the computer. Detective, a modern crime board game, might be the most disappointing game I've played in a very, very long time. I was incredibly amped for this game. I love the Sherlock Holmes games. I love murder mysteries. I love criminology. I'm one of those people who watches crime show documentaries incessantly. Uh, my father was an investigator and when I was growing up I used to go on my school holidays with him up and down the country conducting investigations. So I've always had an interest in police work, criminology, forensics and the investigations process and I was like wow finally this will be the board game for me and it just wasn't. The game fell completely flat with me and my partner and we just couldn't get over the dialogue. We couldn't get over the writing. We couldn't get over how stilted and repetitive everything was in the game. So what was billed to me as a, a fantastic detective game just felt like busy work, it felt like drudge work, it felt like repetition. And the setting was weird, you were like some elite crime unit, but you're investigating a theft from 70 years ago? It was just odd. An odd choice for a first story to bring you into the game is to investigate a cold case from World War II. So yeah, I traded this one away almost immediately. Uh, it's very rare that I trade away a game after only playing it once, but but yeah, Detective, that was one of them. Next up, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, Gale Force 9 has recently got the rights to the June board game. Uh, they're going to be reprinting June for the first time in, well, nearly as long as I've been alive. This, this is an old game that's been out of print forever. It's one of the holy grails of board game collecting. And while this game had been remade as Rex uh, from Fantasy Flight Games, the setting never quite worked as well as it did with the June setting. And I would find myself explaining the factions within Rex using their June types. So I'd say, oh yeah, these guys are the Bene Gesserit, or these guys are the Fremen. Because unless you're a big Twilight Imperium fan, you don't know what these factions do or what they're about. So with the announcement of the June reprint, very happy to get rid of Rex. Uh, hopefully the person who gets it really enjoys it, because it's actually a very good game. It's a very solid game. It's just not June. Next up is a game I was really amped to try because it had a whole bunch of mechanics that I thought would fit really nicely together. It had a little bit of everything. It had auctions, it had bidding on things, it had area control and deck building all built into one game and I thought wow this would be this would be neat. It's a, it's a gang warfare game, it's City of Remnants. And sometimes the sum of a game is not greater than its parts. Individually these systems seem really well but you put them all together and it's just a mess. It's just a mess of a game. City Remnants just doesn't deliver on its promise of being this intricate gang building area control game. It's just messy and the developers even know that because they re-released the game in a streamlined version called Neon Gods and that's still not very good. So yeah we played it a couple of times about five years ago and it just hasn't got back to the table ever since. So I put it on a tray table at Wellicon and someone picked it up for about 20 New Zealand dollars. Next up's actually a pretty good game it's Android Infiltration. Uh, this is a pushy luck game where you're conducting a heist, busting into a complex, and trying to make it out with as much loot as you can carry before the alarms go off and you're all captured. So there's a cooperative element to it, there's a competitive element to it, and there's a pushy luck element to it. And we legitimately enjoyed playing this a couple of times six years ago. And it's just sat there ever since. And whenever we look across the shelf, no one ever went, ah, oh, infiltration, let's play that one again. So after five or six years of not being played, it's simply taking up shelf space at that point. So again, I put this on a trade table at Wellicon, 
someone picked it up and it even sleeves the damn thing and it's got these wonderfully big tarot sized cards that that look gorgeous and it's not really a case of wanting to get rid of the game here it's just the fact no one wanted to play it so out it went next up is a game i reviewed quite recently and that is between two castles of mad king ludwig uh this one's going out for two reasons uh the first of which is i really like between two cities and i've got the expansion for that and i just don't know when one would get played over the other and when you've got two games occupying such a similar space you kind of have to pick which one do you like which one do you like less and that one has to go and the second thing is one of the people in my regular group has rather poor eyesight and literally cannot play the game keeping that game around bringing it out on game night he's like i can't see the icons i can't actually play it and that's kind of a, a terrible thing to have sitting on your shelf between two cities love that game it's still one of my top 20 or so games in my collection i absolutely endorse and adore it between two castles of mad king ludwig i really don't think i needed it in the collection not saying it's a bad game it's just i really like between two cities i don't need both then we have mission red planet now mission red planet's a pretty good area control game it's it's light it's pretty easy to teach and i've got quite a few area control games at my disposal including tammany hall um al grande and eventually galilean moons if he gets his ass into gear and actually puts that on kickstarter which I've been waiting for for nearly a year now. I seriously enjoyed playing Galilean Moons when I got to play with the prototype and he still hasn't put it on Kickstarter. So get to it. But yeah, Mission Red Planet, not a bad game, just taking up space. No one really wanted to play it that much and I just put it on the table at Wellicon. So I'm picked it up for 20 bucks. Next up we have Megaland. So this is the second push your luck game I've got rid of because my group apparently doesn't enjoy push your luck games. Megaland is fine for what it is, and that's an easily accessible, short playtime, push your luck game you can set up, play, and be done in 15 minutes. Most of my groups don't want to play that kind of game, and because it really doesn't have any solo value, uh, it's not much point keeping it. Interestingly enough, I gave this one away to someone who was really interested in getting a copy, and that's uh, Sam McDonald, the designer of Architects of the West Kingdom. So he was like, oh mate, oh, I wouldn't mind grabbing your copy of Megaland off you, so off to him it went so if the next game in the west kingdom series turns out to be a dinky push your luck game you can blame me but please don't then we have planet steam a game i got in an 80 percent off sale what's an 80 percent off sale you ask well that's when a company goes completely bankrupt and they have to sell all their stock to a shady online distributor who then on sells it for peanuts so i paid 16 new zealand dollars for planet steam which is around about at the time seven or eight us dollars and i thought that was a really good deal and i brought it home and i was like oh who wants to play this this sat on my shelf for three years with me going oh here's three or four games we can play this week which one do you want to play and planet steam never got picked not once and i maybe i could have made a harder case for getting it on the table and maybe i've missed something here with planet steam but three years no plays no takers yeah what are you gonna do it's just got to get sent on and i ended up selling that for 10 bucks i made two dollars profit on this and that is how you make money off board game media is uh buying games at 80 percent off and then selling them for ten dollars or i could do paid previews i guess anyway moving right along to a game that no one who watches the channel or pays attention to the channel will be shocked about and that is arkham horror third edition and again arkham horror third edition is not a bad game it's actually a pretty good game if you're the kind of person who enjoys what arkham horror 3 is i am an arkham horror 2 fan i love arkham horror 2 i have everything for arkham horror 2 i didn't need arkham horror 3 other people did like don't get me wrong the game needed to be made it needed to be sold and needed to introduce a whole new group of people to the arkham horror franchise but when you've got a game with eight expansions you don't need a new one unless it really 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 better arkham horror 3 is different arkham horror 3 has got its own character and its own flavor but personally for me i don't think it's better and one of the fascinating things about reviewing arkham 3 was that it prompted me to do this very long video on arkham second edition where i interviewed the designers of arkham 1 2 and 3 and got their comments and, and incorporated that into a long form video and that really crystallized for me how much i enjoyed arkham second edition how important a game it was to me and why there's absolutely no need for me to replace it in my collection and i think that's a bit of advice to keep in mind just because there's a new edition doesn't mean that edition's going to be better for you new doesn't mean better for everyone so if you do have an old edition of a game you prefer to the current edition there's nothing wrong with that and then we move on to two games that I'm getting rid of, not because they are bad games at all, but because they are good games. And by good, I mean 
they're perfectly serviceable games they're fun they're okay but shelf space is just a premium and those two games are farlight and klondike rush both these games suffer from the same problem in that while playing them i enjoyed the game i thought it was fun there were good decisions to be made they were enjoyable but when we were done i didn't think about them again and i think about bad games after i've played them and what could be done better and i think about great games and what i could do next time good games that are just okay they're just they're solid leave me in this weird space where i'm like okay i've played that and that's about the level of engagement so yeah i played those games i had fun doing it i've passed them on to other people who will enjoy them more than i will most likely but i can't rip on those games because there's nothing fundamentally bad about them so they're in a bit of a weird gray space for me the good but not great and also not memorable games and finally we have a game that i traded away the day i published a review of it and that is batman gotham city chronicles so batman's not a bad game i'd actually play it again anytime i'd really enjoy playing it again and i traded it to a friend of mine who was one of the testers for the video for some other board games that i'm going to put on the channel so off him i got vengeance kickstarter edition and museum kickstarter edition in trade but the simple fact is, this game takes up so much damn space. It takes up about the same space as six other games. And while I would have liked to have kept it, I couldn't find five or six games to get rid of to justify keeping this one game. And that's a curious logistics about these big Kickstarter games. Like, I've got Lords of Hellas, I've got Gloomhaven, and I've got the starter box for Cthulhu Wars. These take up huge amounts of space. And the room I have is only so big. My shelves are only so big. I can't just stockpile board games in the corridor like some kind of hoarder. As much as I am tempted to. And trust me, I'm, I'm tempted to at times to just keep games. But you've got to make a hard call. And I enjoyed playing Batman. I enjoyed it a lot. And I'd gladly play it with Conan who's picked the game up off me. Yeah. The guy who picked up the game of Batman off me is named Conan, and Batman is a remake of Conan. It's just one of those weird coincidences. Getting a lot of games is something I've done for a very long time, and it's becoming a bit of an occupational hazard when you're reviewing games, because, you know, I'm putting up one to two videos a week on different games. So in order to keep up, I'm getting one to two games a week. That's one to two games that I'm having to find storage space for or one to two games I'm having to on sell or trade to people. It also means every game that gets added to your collection is another one you have to choose from when it comes to game night. So if you've got 30 games in your collection and you play once a week and you get through two games a night, you'll get through those games four times a year. If you've got 200 games on your shelves and you game once a week and you get through two a night, it's gonna take you two years to get through that. So at some point a collection becomes unmanageable or unplayable. Now my collection's a little odd because an awful lot of my stuff is soloable or two player which means I can get to it a lot more than my two regular game nights a week. But there's a danger in this hobby of overloading yourself with cardboard. And for the first time in a very long time I actually have a shelf of shame. I always prided myself on getting a game and playing it within the first week or so. But I now have games that I've had for months that I haven't been able to get to yet. Simply because of the demands of a channel and work. I have some damn good looking games on that shelf of shame as well and I'm probably going to do a video on that in the coming days. So I think I'll leave you with one final thought on this and that is if you're looking to buy a game ask yourself am I actually going to be able to play this anytime in the future? I mean your goal might be I want to buy a whole bunch of games for retirement and that's fine that's a that's an admirable goal but if you're slapping down 200 US on a Kickstarter campaign that will take 100 hours of play and you've already got six of those on your shelf that you haven't got to yet ask yourself why the hell am i doing this i mean i run a youtube channel that reviews board games so i will eventually get through all the games i have and i will put them on the channel so operating a high level of churn is kind of understandable in my position but i worry that for some people the getting is more important than the having and that's kind of troubling to me i don't want to feel like my channel is part of a machine that is encouraging people to buy things they don't need or they don't really want and that's why i want to keep doing these videos to tell people that it's okay to get rid of some games. It's okay not to have everything in your collection. It's okay for another friend of yours to own a game and for you to borrow it off them if you want to play it. There's literally no need to have a thousand unplayed board games sitting in your garage. And if you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and check out our Patreon.